It's not what I ordered. <laughs> yes, it is. Plate sizes, tricky menus, and the fear of missing out. Here are the 10 sneakiest food business tactics that are scamming you. Not using dollar signs on the menu. Wow, look at these prices. Yeah, these are pretty cha-ching. Changing a menu item's price from an amount like $10 to $9.95 is a psychological cue that a menu item doesn't cost as much and is a pricing tactic that many of us are familiar with. Look at any Starbucks menu and you'll see prices like $4.45 or $5.45, but never a rounded number like $5 or $6. But did you know that not using dollar signs has a similar impact on how we perceive prices? When you see a dollar sign on the menu, it's an automatic reminder that you'll be spending something that you value, your hard-earned money. Shut up and take my money! Removing the dollar sign helps limit that association when looking at the price of a menu item, making you more likely to order your food without thinking about the price. This is another tactic Starbucks uses, and so do a lot of America's most loved food and beverage places like McDonald's and Olive Garden. It might seem sneaky, but not having dollar signs is a common business tactic to keep your mind off of money and instead focused on food. Servers suggesting a personal favorite. The waiter comes over, he's telling me about the specials. Super fancy, fancy vegetables, fancy sauces. Having a server you can have a fun and quick conversation with often adds to the enjoyment of eating out at a restaurant. Maybe it's the friendly cashier helping you place your to-go order. This is something restaurants, cafes, and fast food outlets encourage their staff to do. This is because it positively adds to the customer experience by adding a little social fun and personal connection. One of the ways food businesses encourage this personal connection is to have their servers and cashiers try things from the menu. If you've ever worked at a restaurant, odds are you've experienced this firsthand by being encouraged to try items from the menu. Or you may have even been given items off the menu to try for free. This is free? Okay. In many cases, servers won't have tried everything on the menu, but they are likely to have tried items with a higher price tag and higher profit margin, so these will be the items they're recommending. This is done so that servers can make honest and sincere suggestions to customers and promote higher ticket and higher profit suggestions to the customers they serve. You can assume this is the case with your server at most restaurants you visit. Having a server make a recommendation based on their preference adds a personalized human approach to encourage you to spend a little more money than you may have otherwise spent. Strategic menu pricing and placement. We need strategy, the perfect plan. Have you ever noticed that menus often have their most expensive item listed next to a cheaper one? Or similarly priced items right next to each other? This is a strategic menu layout, and there are a few reasons behind these placements. Most restaurants don't actually want you to order the most expensive item on the menu. Instead, they want you to order the item with the highest profit margin. But how can they encourage their patrons to do this? by having these high-profit entrees listed right next to their most expensive item. In comparison, the lower-priced but higher-profit item looks like a better deal and makes you more likely to order it. This is known as decoy pricing. Another way they do this is with barbell pricing. By putting two similarly-priced items that have very different value offers side-by-side -side for people to compare, often people will go with the item that offers the better deal, which is also often often the more expensive and profit-driven menu item. Here we go, profit, profit, profit. On top of this, expensive and high profit margin items will be placed at the top right of a menu since this is usually the first place we look when we open up a menu. These strategic price layouts take advantage of our natural reading tendencies to get us looking at the restaurant's most profitable dishes right away to make you more likely to order them. No sneaky tactics here. If you're new to our channel, then hit that subscribe button so you never miss out. Serving plates, cups, and cutlery. You just eat it straight out of the wrapper and then throw it all out. 
This one might be surprising, but what your food is served on sends you value signals. And you can be sure that the restaurant, cafe, or even takeout spot you frequent has put thought into what your food and drinks are served in or on. Have you ever heard A&W talk about its perfectly frosted mugs that they serve your root beer in? Or notice that your plate is perfectly sized for the entree you ordered? A lot of thought has gone into these serving dishes to deliver an enjoyable experience and to increase how you feel about the value of the meal. That frosted root beer mug delivers a novelty experience and makes that root beer seem oh so much sweeter, or that root beer float so much more satisfying. Refreshing. And that perfectly sized plate looks fuller and is likely heavier than the plates you have at home, the weight of it signaling what a good deal you're getting for the amount of food you've been served. This even plays into the cutlery available at a restaurant. Heavier knives, forks, and spoons send out those same signals. The perceived value and the enjoyment of the experience will have you coming back again and again because you're enjoying yourself and getting more bang for your buck. Or are you? It's simple, effective, and definitely sneaky. The graphic design of the menu. It's very important. White space, standalone products, decorative elements, and nesting prices are all design tricks you'll see on menus and menu boards, even at a drive through These are used to get your eye drawn to certain items and to make it more difficult to scan through things like prices. White space is an empty area with no text or images on a piece of paper or of a design, and our eyes are naturally drawn to these spaces when we scan a lot of text, including the text of a menu. One way restaurants take advantage of that is to place a high profit or high price menu item in the middle of that white space. Your eye will easily land there, making it a standout option for you while you're deciding what to order. To really make this standalone item stand out and seem like a featured item, they'll often include decorative elements around the item listing and a mouthwateringly delicious looking picture of the meal surrounded by the full meal workup from the hot and delicious sign to the cool, condensation covered drink. Nesting prices, on the other hand, are done for the opposite reason. This is done to make it more difficult to draw your eye to it and to make it more difficult to price compare. So instead of scanning through a row of prices looking for the cheaper items, you'll have to scan through all of the entree names and descriptions to find the prices. Menu designs are carefully planned to draw your attention to or away from what the restaurant wants you to think about down-selling products. So what don't you want? Down-selling sounds like the opposite of what you'd expect from a place trying to make money, but this can actually be used as a tactic to make you spend more. What is down-selling? It can look like this. Your server is talking about one item, but then mentions a different item that's a better deal. Servers are often reading the table to get a sense of how people will order, and some servers can read people who want to impress or flash their money. And this is where downselling comes into play. The people who want to seem like they aren't cheap or worried about finances or want the best of the best will go for the more expensive option brought up by the server. How's your steamed trout? It's not great. Heard you loud and clear. Trout me. This might sound counterintuitive, but downselling is a tactic that works to get some people to spend more money. Walking by your table with food. My boss says you have to either order or leave and never come back. Ever pop by a place just to get a coffee or an appetizer? Many food places have tricks for turning that into ordering something more. When this happens, it's not uncommon that your server will leave an extra menu at your table so that if you change your mind or decide you want more, you have all your options right there. But what you may not have realized is that some places will have servers walk by your table with food for other tables. This is to make you more intrigued and interested in ordering something else from the menu. Some places even go beyond walking by with enticing looking food, they'll even bring dishes around that sound good. Think sizzling dishes and entrees like the ones you'd find at Chili's. Yummers. These get multiple senses engaged, so now you're not just seeing the delicious, perfectly plated food pass you by, you're hearing and smelling it too. All these sensations will have you craving something you weren't even thinking about when you sat down. And before you know it, you'll be looking at that menu that was left on the table just in case you changed your mind. Writing enticing, mouth-watering descriptions. 
microgreens and lettuces encapsulated and served with dehydrated seaweed and dried fish legs. Words that make your mouth water and stimulate your imagination are used to capture your attention and entice you to make a decision. Phrases like rich and creamy, sun-dried, handmade, and locally sourced are just some of the ways restaurants do this. They're painting a picture and telling a story with their menu descriptions that pique your interest and taste buds. On top of this, restaurants focused on dishes from regions with a primary language other than English will also add words from that area. Spaghetti. Take, for instance, your favorite Italian restaurant. In an effort to look authentic, it includes Italian words and names for food items, and even categories of food on its menu. Same with any other restaurant inspired by a region with another language, like that fancy French place. And let's be honest, doesn't escargot sound more appealing than snail? And doesn't aperitivo sound more sophisticated and refined than appetizer? These little additions and changes to a menu make everything feel more authentic. And when things feel more authentic, you're more likely to enjoy the food, spend more money, and come back again. Rumor also has it that these words and descriptions keep your mind on the food and off of the prices, so you'll spend based on your appetite instead of your wallet. Limited Time Offers Doritos Tacos is only for a limited time? Scarcity is a sales driver because it hooks into that feeling of FOMO and has us itching to get something that we might not usually get purely because we don't want to miss out on the opportunity to get it. What does this look like for the food business? It can look like specialty items and annual promotions. Think of McDonald's Shamrock Shake, Starbucks Pumpkin Spice Latte, or Tim Horton's Roll Up the Rim to Win promo. These are all around for a limited time only, and the goal is to get you in the door and order while you can. But these fast food places aren't the only ones to do this. Even restaurants and smaller cafes will have seasonal drinks or limited time only dishes, and they'll also reinforce this by placing a featured menu on your table telling you all about it. Oh, and remember reminding you that it'll only be there a little while longer. All these limited time offers are to get you to visit the restaurant for a specific reason, and often leads to patrons returning to get it again while it's still available. On top of this, food places know that once you're there, you're likely to order a few other things in addition to the limited time offer. Upselling discounts and deals. You know we're doing salads now. A lot of people don't expect that from McDonald's. Chunky chicken salad. Do you want fries with that? Or would you like to make that into a combo meal? These are questions that you'll hear pretty much anywhere you go to get food, be it at the drive-thru or sitting at a restaurant table. There's a real reason why servers and fast food cashiers are trained to ask you these questions. Asking you if you'd like something that pairs well with the item you ordered is another way to get a little more money out of your wallet. Or in other words, it's a simple way of upselling food products to customers for the business to increase their bottom line. This tactic works especially well if the upsell is made out to sound like the additional item is included with the original menu item and won't cost you anything more at the checkout, like changing your side from fries to a salad. Salad, trying to eat healthy. Another way upselling is done is by mentioning that something you ordered comes in a larger size at the same or similar price, or that you can get a second one for a reduced price. These deals and questions make it easier to go ahead and grab a little something extra that you had no intention of buying, and for businesses to get a little more profit out of your order. Looking for more? Check out our other videos. And if you're new here, take a second to subscribe to our channel and ring that notification bell.